everyone. Welcome to our very first virtual online gathering of thanks and praise. And so this is a gathering of the Ashburnham Ecumenical Council. Um, and we are here to celebrate Thanksgiving together. And uh, we're just so glad and honored that you chose to be with us tonight. Let's just continue. Um, and I'm going to introduce to you now Father Hartford from St. Dennis to begin things off tonight. And let us pray. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the ways that you bless our lives and bless our families. During this Thanksgiving time, we are reminded of all the ways that you are working in our lives. We know during this pandemic that we've been really losing some of the things in our lives that we probably take for granted. And we thank you for opening our eyes to be able to see all the great things that we can do in your name. Continue to watch over us, watch over our country and this world so that all may come to that great conclusion that you are God, that you are great, and that you love us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Get wealth, 
that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as at this day. Here ends the reading. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness. O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, setting its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy.
reading from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered the gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed, and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in the thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to the God for his indescribable gift. I am Corrine. I wanted to show you guys something about prayer and how important it is that um, we pray and talk to God. And I wanted to show you something so cool to give you an idea of what it might look like and what it may be like. In Philippians chapter four, verse six, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You want to make sure that you are always thankful or do your best to be thankful. It can be really hard sometimes, especially if you get sick or if you're doing something really difficult or if your homework is just driving you crazy. <laughs> it can be really hard to be thankful in those moments. But remember, God gives you each and every moment. Each moment may have a lesson. It may have something for you to um, experience. It may be an opportunity for you to be the light of Jesus to somebody else. We just don't know. And that's why it's so important to be thankful for every moment that we do have while we're here on this earth and to make sure to let God know about that. So when you pray, be sure to share your gratitude, share your thanks. Um, but let me um, show you the fun experiment that my daughter helped me with. So here's Evan. We have a jar of water and she's spraying some shaving cream on top. This layer of shaving cream represents the barrier that we may feel when talking to God. We can't see him. Sometimes we can't hear him. And it can be difficult to know that our prayers actually get to him. May even feel cloudy, right? Sometimes we feel cloudy. The food coloring that Evan is adding in represents a prayer. You may pray for your grown-ups at home. Maybe you pray for your siblings if you have brothers or sisters. Maybe you're feeling sick. Each of these colors represents our prayers. You'll see that they color the shaving cream, but as we wait, thanks Evan, as we wait, you'll see what happens to each of these colors. Here are all of our colorful prayers, and there they go. Breaking through what feels like a cloud, breaking through that barrier into something that is so beautiful. And it's so beautiful to God's ears to hear each of us, his children, calling out to him, thanking him, asking for help, praising him. How beautiful that is.
This reading is from Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten lepers stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, their leprosy disappeared. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God, I'm healed. He fell face down on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Does only this foreigner return to give glory to God? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Good evening. It's wonderful to gather with all of you here this evening um, in this world where we have to gather in new ways. I'm glad that we are here together. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Holy God, guide our words, guide our minds, guide our hearing that we might hear and that we might learn how to live your word in the world. Amen. So today's text is a common one for Thanksgiving. Um, and in some ways, the text, the message is fairly obvious. If you find Jesus has healed you, stop what you're doing and thank God for the gift. Seriously, ten are healed and only one says thanks? Of course, it's possible the other nine wanted to be checked out by the priest to be given the okay before they dared to believe that they were healed. You know, let's check and see if it's true first. Let's wait and see if there's some other diagnosis. Let's verify. Let's find out whether our life is actually better with this healing. Gotta check out the future before I know that I am thankful. We're gathered here, of course, as a group of stalwart believers. Likely, we are the most stalwart believers that gather on a Sunday on um, Facebook in the middle of a pandemic uh, in an ecumenical environment. We're, we're the heart. We're the, we're the people who stick to this faith thing. So we probably all, everyone here, know to thank God when we're healed. We got this one. But there's more to this story that is important. First, all ten were healed. Jesus says to the one, your faith has made you well. But there's no evidence that the other nine lost their healing. Ten were healed regardless of their ability or inclination to say thank you. It's hard for those of us who follow Jesus um, let me reword that. It's hard for me as a follower of Jesus. Don't want to speak for all of you. But sometimes it's hard to remember that Jesus came for everyone. Some of us follow Jesus explicitly, but that doesn't limit Jesus in any way. He came for all. He healed many. Jesus' work continues in the world around us today. I have a particular Jesus path to follow. Each of our congregations have a particular Jesus path to follow. And the other nine are healed anyway. We are not in charge. For this particular Thanksgiving season, there's a, another important difficulty. For one, lots of people are not healed at this time. My father-in-law just died of COVID along with almost a quarter of a million other people in the United States. Reading about the deaths at the Veterans Home here in Massachusetts, it just makes me cry. And like the lepers of the first century, those with COVID are kept separate from us for fear that we will be infected as well. 
I work hard to keep my distance, but I hate it. Because we must stay separate even from the people who do not appear sick, because they may be infectious, I am not going to be able to see my parents or my siblings for Thanksgiving this year. I have to find a way to give thanks when it is not safe to be with those who are most important to me. The Deuteronomy text reminds us that God has a good plan for us. We are not yet to the promised kingdom where we all will have enough, where we all are healthy, where we all have people we love near us. We are not there yet, but God is leading us to that time and place. And Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, reminds us to sow our gifts freely. Give so much that there are leftovers for the poor and the oppressed. Give so much that not just our community, but the whole world is blessed by our giving. Make it so our cup runneth over. This feels like, to me like a reminder when I want to be one of the nine not saying thank you. It's a reminder that it's okay to say thank you too many times. It's okay to say thank you too soon. It's okay to overdo it. The trick to this is to be in the moment. To sit here in this time and place and to identify what is good around us and say thanks for that. Yes, we do not know what tomorrow will bring. Say thank you anyway. Yes, it has been a difficult road to get here today. Say thank you anyway. Being thankful helps us to stay in the here and now and helps us to see that the Holy Spirit is here with us at this very moment. Listing our blessings, giving thanks for our plenty, appreciating the ways that we can connect with each other, even over the internet, even at a distance. All of these strategies help us to be present in the moment and to be present with God. And so I say, thank you, God, for the gift of enough to eat, for the gift of churches gathering together, for the gift of your life among us. Thank you, God, for this good news you have brought to us this evening. Amen, 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 alleluia. So welcome to our time of prayer as we gather across the miles and lift our concerns and share our celebrations one to the other. And before we move into that section of our prayer, if you would just allow me to open with a word of prayer from the Iona community. And it goes like this. Thanks be to you, God, awesomely distant. Thanks for the searing of shooting stars the colors of the planets in the night sky, the space and power beyond our perceiving that sparkles the sky of our lives with your caring. Thanks be to you, God, uncomfortably close, giving life to dead, dry things, the dance of our pure stillness, the beat of our hearts is your doing. Thanks be to you, God, known in a body, who blessed as he lived, who raised up our life to be gathered as one, reaching out for the kingdom. God, we just come before you in these moments, these precious moments. Lord, knowing that you are with us, right? You promise us, God, that you never leave us nor forsake us. And so in these moments, God, we hold fast to the promises that are contained in your word and through your word. And that with this relationship that we have in Christ, we can lift our concerns, knowing that we have an Abba Father, a Daddy, a Father, a Creator God in heaven that loves us and cares for us so abundantly and is leaning down even now to hear from heaven our concerns and our celebrations. And so we come to you, O oh God, in these seasons, 
in this Thanksgiving season in particular, God, with hearts full of gratitude. And yet, God, also in this season, there is a weight. There are burdens, God. There's a, the things that we are struggling with even now. And God, we know that we need to surrender them into your hands. And so we come in faith to share our prayers, to verbalize them, to speak them. There's creation in the spoken word, that there is newness of life in the spoken word. And so we speak them in faith of your answer. Thank you, Lord. So tonight, what we're going to do is just share our concerns and our celebrations. Normally, if we were to gather in person, we would raise a hand and I would say, yes, what is that thing that you want to share with everyone gathered here tonight? But we can't do that, right? Strangely enough. But instead, I think what we'll do is we'll give ourselves a minute to share our prayer concerns and our celebrations. And the way that you're going to do that tonight is to just comment in this feed, comment in the Facebook or in the YouTube um, section where you can just add a comment, a prayer concern, you can lift up a need and know that as we gather, as the body of Christ knit together as we have been tonight through this strange technological marvel, <laughs> that we can join one to the other. And I would encourage you, as you see prayers being lifted, that maybe you comment in the same way that, that you are praying, that you are believing. And if there's a celebration, that we would celebrate with those that are celebrating. And so I'm going to commit the next 60 seconds into this sweet mystery that we have in communing with God and one to the other as the body of Christ. And so take this coming minute to share your concerns, and to lift your celebrations. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, thank you so much for sharing and commenting and being part of community this evening during our Thanksgiving service. And so I have a Thanksgiving prayer, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Thanksgiving prayer, the response is, we give you thanks. And so when I say that, just say that with me. Gracious God, for your love for us, gentle as a shower, healing our pain, binding our wounds, we give you thanks. For your love for us, sure as the dawn, transforming our darkness, revealing your truth, we give you thanks. For your love for us, mercifully steadfast, calling us to you, raising us up, we give you thanks. For your love for us, encouraging questions, open to doubts, making us vulnerable, we give you thanks. Urge us on, O oh Christ, to find wholeness through serving you by serving others in the power of your spirit. And we close with the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as they, as they leaned in and they said, we want what you have. We want that relationship with the Father. Teach us, Jesus, to pray like you. And so he said, this is what we should do. This is how we should pray together. And in these words, we join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.